It's a fascinating insight that seems to be into capitalism, that there is a kind of uh, idea beneath it. Uh, it is an assumption about, a future, about, about the future, uh, which uh, I, I guess drives components of the capitalist uh, machinery, so to speak, uh, and that is the need for greater abundance. Right. Well, actually, one thing that we haven't really looked at that I think is really interesting and right in your sweet spot in terms of, uh, of interest is the effect on foreign policy. Uh, young worlds are worlds that fight wars. Right. What happens in old worlds? Uh, the concept of a geriatric peace, because we'll have an older population, uh, not a term for, uh, but it's a, another scholar came up with it. Uh, it's a quite an interesting idea. I mean, I was uh, recently... I'm tired, I only got bad wants to fight yeah, wars. Yeah, because young, young people are the people who fight wars, really. I mean, you, you, you don't have armies full of old people. So when you start looking at that, and you look at the amount of effort that we put in this world into this particular topic, uh, which is you know, military uh, activity, uh, what happens when there's less of an impulse within society to do those kinds of things? Because the potential is there with an older population. I mean, the median age of an American today is 38. 38 years old. Well, one of the things that's uh, been remarkably illuminating about this conversation has been um, the suggestion, and intuitively I think that you're completely correct, that uh, governmental efforts here have really not been very effective uh, and that there are forces out there beyond our control that tend to be sort of self-correcting uh, in the world, and the population problem itself is um, kind of sort of self-correcting. Yeah, I mean, it, it certainly like it fits some of these uh, science fiction -y ideas of are we all sort of connected in some some cultural transnational meme <laughs> whereby birth rates are decreasing in part as a as a species self-corrective mechanism, right? right? Exactly. And, and there are definitely, you know, if you look out into pop culture, that theme is actually there. Now, it's completely unprovable, but it's out there. It's funny, this, is, this, this could not have been more illuminating. And we truly appreciate uh, uh, both of your uh, contributions to uh, understanding this, this question. We do have certain perceptions, uh, expectations about a future which are uh, perhaps pessimistic, and I would say perhaps uh, behind the curve a little bit. Uh, you are looking beyond the curve, and we appreciate uh, we appreciate having you both very much. Thank you. Thank you. Great. That, uh, that is interesting. The story of the changing views of the future arising from changing trends in demographics. From the picture of an overpopulated world with too few adults who tend to too many children, to the emerging picture of a world of shrinking population with too few young people to care for too many elderly should suggest humility about forecasting, even when predictions are based on the best available data at the time. The story of how the population bomb became the population bust also suggests humanity's great and rapid adaptability. In and of itself, that is, of course, no guarantee that the new set of worries about the apparent new demographic trends can be assumed to be solvable without real pain by some next wave of human ingenuity. But the whole truth of this matter seems to me to be that there is at least as much reason to hope for a better world for our grandchildren than to fear for a worse one. I am David Eisenhower. Thank you for watching The Whole Truth.